Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about several visual displays of data, histograms, line graphs, and bar charts. The data from a frequency distribution can be communicated with the aid of a histogram. It's just a series of rectangles whose lengths represent the frequencies, and they're placed next to each other on a chart. So the data from this frequency distribution on the left is displayed in the histogram on the right. The frequency of the data is in the vertical axis going from 0 through 5. That corresponds to the heights of the rectangles. So for example, the, this data is indicating the number of families who have 1, 2, 3, or 4 siblings in the family. You can see from the chart very easily that most of the families that were surveyed have three siblings, whereas it's less common to have one or four. There's also something called a grouped frequency histogram, which includes classes of data. So instead of each bar representing one particular value, it might be a span of values. Here we see classes 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, and so on. We will not be discussing grouped frequency histograms in this video, but we will in an upcoming video. The link to that video is down below. So let's talk more about other visual displays of data that can be used to display data from a frequency distribution. This one's called a frequency polygon. In a frequency polygon, instead of drawing a rectangle, you just plot a single point at the appropriate height for each frequency. The data values go along the horizontal axis, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You see those in the column labeled x. x always represents data values. The frequencies, or number of times that data value occurs, is along the vertical axis, 0 through 5, just like before when we looked at the histogram. We've plotted a point to represent the number of times each data value occurs. For example, the data value 3 occurs 4 times. After we plot those points, we connect the points with a series of connected line segments, making sure to complete the polygon with segments that trail down to the axis on either end. I like to emphasize this because if you're working a homework question and they ask you to choose the correct frequency polygon, if you choose one that doesn't have the segments that trail down to the axis, then you will be marked incorrect. The frequency polygon we just looked at is a type of line graph. Line graphs can be used to represent many kinds of data, not just frequencies. For example, to demonstrate how a quantity changes with respect to time, we use a line graph. We connect a series of segments that rise and fall with time according to the magnitude of the quantity being illustrated. So here's a line graph that shows the stock price of a company over a six month time span. You can quickly see from this diagram that the stock price is on the rise. Notice too that line graphs do not connect to the axis at the ends unless they happen to be a frequency polygon. A frequency distribution of non-numerical observations can be presented in the form of a bar graph. A bar graph is similar to a histogram in that it has rectangles, but the rectangles are usually not touching each other and sometimes they're arranged horizontally. Here is a bar graph that represents the number of vowels in a particular sentence. So this sentence had two A's, seven E's, four I's, four O's, and one U. The reason that the rectangles are not adjacent to each other, that there's a space in between, is because A, E, I, O, and U are not a span of values like numerical values. So remember when you're doing your homework, if you're asked to create a bar graph, you have to have the spaces in between the rectangles. There are also other visual displays of data, grouped histograms, stem and leaf displays, and circle graphs. We're going to look at those in the next few videos. There are also links to these videos below. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.